Hey everybody, my name is Darren Stott. I'm lead pastor at Seattle Revival Center. Um, we started a new series at the beginning of the year called The Heart of the Matter, and we're going through the book of Galatians. Um, not everybody can attend our church on Sundays. Darn. Um, and not everybody has an hour each week to listen to the podcast, but perhaps you have five minutes uh, to watch a YouTube video. And so we're doing this little video series called The Heart of the Matter, where we will be focusing on kind of one gold nugget in each video um, that hopefully will be encouraging to you. And um, I guess the, the main goal is just not to, uh, to depress you uh, too much. Um, there's enough stuff on TV and on YouTube um, to depress you. Um, and so hopefully uh, this won't depress you, but it will impress you, not because you're looking at Darren Stott, but, but be, because perhaps at one point in time during the course of this video, my voice gets turned down and the voice of the Holy Spirit gets turned up and something happens um, not inside your brain, but actually inside your heart. <laughs> You know. Okay, so uh, we're going to look at Galatians chapter 1 today, verse 3, and Paul is writing to the Galatians, and he says, Grace to you and peace from God our Father and Lord Jesus Christ. That's our verse. Um, that seems like a, nice, um, like a nice verse, and it is, um, but you have to realize that Paul's letter to the Galatians um, is actually a letter of rebuke and correction. And so um, this is very nice of Paul, but it's not as nice as the other letters that Paul writes. Um, in the other epistles, Paul always begins his letters with, um, with a paragraph giving thanks for the believers that he's writing to. Um, uh, the book of Galatians is different in that Paul doesn't stop to give thanks for the audience that he's writing to. Um, this is about it, you know, grace to you in peace from God our Father and Lord Jesus Christ. He expounds a little bit in the following verses on, on, on this God and Father and Lord Jesus Christ and his character and nature. And then he just gets, he gets right into business, right? And so um, you say, well, why are you looking at verse three? Why don't we just get, get into business? And um, because you need to know that first of all, what's communicated here is Paul's heart for the people that he's about to rebuke. And in doing so, he's actually reflecting the heart of God. You see, um, most people don't like to be rebuked. And yet we know that that's one of the reasons why Scripture has been given to us. In uh, 2 Timothy 3.16, we see that all of, all of Scripture is, is God-breathed and it's been given to us um, for teaching, for reproof, for correction, rebuke, and training in righteousness, right? So there's something about the Word of God that it actually brings fine-tuning to our heart strings so that we can be more in tune um, and, uh, and really reflect uh, the character and nature of Jesus, the one whom we are focusing our attention and gaze on, the one who we worship, the one who we're changing more and more into His image and likeness, amen? So... Um, in this text here, grace to you, grace to you, grace to you. I'm about to rebuke you, but first of all, <laughs> grace to you and peace to you. From who? From God, our Father and Lord Jesus Christ. So Paul is saying, I'm about to rebuke you. I'm about to correct you, but pay attention because I'm not about to reject you. When we have to understand that God's will for our lives, it's the heart of God that we would know his grace and his peace peace so that when rebuked by the Lord, we don't perceive that as rejection and say, see, I, I knew, I knew God was just like that, or I knew Christians were just like that, so that we know the heart of God, we know the heart of other believers, so that when we're confronted, we can say, look, I know, I know you care for me, I know you love me, I know I can trust you, so Lord, allow me to have a heart posture to really listen um, to what uh, these leaders and what these other believers have to say. So when we say um, grace unto you from, from the Lord Jesus Christ, this word grace, it communicates God's undeserved kindness that he wants to show towards us. Grace, it communicates compassion as well as the generosity of God. When he says, and peace be unto you, this word peace, shalom, it's communicating God's involvement in our lives. It's concerning God's concern for our care and our well-being. So yes, God loves us. Yes, he cares for us. Yes, he wants to be involved in the intimate little details um, of our life. And because he loves us, because he cares for us, he's gonna tell us the truth and he's gonna tell it to us in love even if it seems maybe a little bit harsh. Um, Paul is, is saying here, hey, 
you misguided believers. Hey, you misled believers. You confused believers. You angry, deceived believers. You have a heavenly father and he loves you. May all of your needs be satisfied in him and our father God and from the Lord Jesus Christ. And then he goes on in verse four to say, this God who loves you so much that he gave um, himself for our sins to deliver us from this present evil age according to the will of our of our God and Father. How do you know if somebody loves you? Because they tell you the truth. Faithful are the wounds of a friend. And so, how do you know if somebody doesn't love you? They don't tell you the truth. They they um, they when they see stuff that isn't right, they just ignore it. Or maybe they just ignore you altogether. How do you know that somebody really loves you? Because they'll sit down and say, "Hey, look, there are some issues. If I have a booger hanging out of my nose, and you know it, and you see it, and everybody else sees it, and you won't point it out, well." If I have a booger hanging out of my nose and you see it and everybody else sees it, but you're not willing to point it out, I don't know if you're really a friend. A real friend will sit down and say, yo, dude, right? Like, you got a, you got a booger hanging out of your nose. Um, you know, that, that, that's a friend. And we need more friends within the body of Christ. We need more people to say, hey, look, um, I, I hear what you're professing, but um, you're not necessarily packing you know, the heat that you're talking about. And so we need those kind of relationships. We need that kind of accountability. We need fathers in the faith who will tell us the truth, just like Father, de- just like Paul does um, with these Galatians here. Um, hey, look, I'm about to rebuke you. I'm about to bring this message, but it doesn't mean that I'm rejecting you. I love you. I love you enough to take the time to write to you this very detailed letter so that your heart can be fine-tuned, so that you can reveal the beauty and glory of Jesus Christ who loved us so much that he laid his life down for us. Hey, let's stay Stick together. Let's not be divided. Let's not be isolated. Let's just let's come on. Let's let's keep it together and um, and let's reveal Jesus. Is that good? Well, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Love you guys.